Um, Louisville dodged catastrophe against New Mexico State. Yes, catastrophe. It won in overtime. I did watch this game. I'm like, you know, FAU was a blowout. I think that game actually had wrapped at that point. Keeping an eye on just an atrocious 1 p.m. NFL slate, by the way. And um, and so here's Louisville looking like it's going to lose a game to a program which has a like a proud history for its level, except for last season when it literally canceled its season. Borderline impressive as far as I can, can tell in the history of men's division one basketball for the reasons that it had to literally stop playing basketball. New Mexico State had a chance to win it with 1.5 seconds to go. They had a big guy who I don't they called it a block. It actually looked like a charge in that moment. Whatever. Ball didn't lie. Missed them both. Uh, New Mexico State had terrible foul issues. They had four dudes on the court as this game ended. Louisville wound up winning. <laughs> I mean, Louisville had Louisville barely beat a team that only had four guys on the court and who's who just quit the whole season last season. If Louisville that's, had, that's what I'm saying. If it lost, if it had lost to a team with four dudes on the court after all this, then we probably would have had to lead the podcast with it. Right? Am I wrong? I mean, my God. <laughs> I mean, I, I was thinking about this the other day. If you're Kenny Payne, and you like, it's pretty clear at this point. This ain't. This is what they are. They're 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 good enough to barely beat a New Mexico State program that shut down last season and had to finish a game today with four players. They're good enough to barely beat that. That's what they are. How do you get up and go to work every day without just? How do you? You're a competitor. I I know, but like, I mean, what do you what, what do you expect him to do? I <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I would just feel defeated every single day. Like, my God, we we are like it's not like well we've been bad and we're but we're getting better or we've been bad and um, but it was just a small sample size. It's like from the moment I took this thing over, it's been a disaster, and we just barely beat a team with four players. I mean, it, and there's no indication there's going to be a year three of this. It just that's the saddest situation in college basketball right now. I don't mm-hmm. think it's close. They're they're 500 for the first time since February since the morning of February 5th, 2021. Yeah, run close. through it. <laughs> run through it. Tell I mean, me the, t- tell me their 500 record. The 3 and th- oh, they're 3 and 3. Oh yeah, I know. Give me the wins and the losses. Or it's 2022. Uh the wins oh this year okay. Uh the wins over UMBC 94-93. Coppin State rolled them 61-41. They just beat New Mexico State 90-84 in overtime. Losses to Chattanooga by 10. Hey. Texas by one and Indiana by eight on a neutral floor. Um, rumors that, by the way, this is the second time this has happened to us this season. Let me bring this up. Rumors that Indiana was losing at halftime to Harvard as we're recording this podcast right now. It's true. Right now, um, the second best team in Indiana, oh, Butler, is up 65-46 on Boise State. So killing Boise State. That's the second best team in the state of Indiana. And the third best best team in the state of Indiana for now because Indiana State's right there. I mean, right there, buddy. But for now, it is the Indiana Hoosiers and they are down 40 to 39 to Harvard at the half. Did we make a mistake and, and hit the record button maybe about 40 minutes too early on this show right now? Baby, I'll just sit here until this game's over if you want to. Let's just wait it out. You got any, what'd you What'd you guys do this weekend? Just uh, tell me a story. Oh, boy. We'll burn right. some time. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Indiana, get it together here. Um, so that was Louisville. Uh, disaster. Um, speaking of disaster, Louisville plays. We'll get to DePaul here right now. So Louisville plays at DePaul Saturday, December 9th. Be there, people. They're both going to lose. Louisville They're both going to lose. DePaul. That I am. If Paris doesn't put that in the final four and one, it's my and one game. Buddy, we'll a, do it. A lock. A lock. DePaul is one in five. It lost at home on Saturday to Northern Illinois. And this is Tony Stubblefield's third season. It's just not working. It hasn't been working in general for DePaul over the past two decades. Um, in our season, our, our uh, season premiere episode, whatever you want to call it, that first Sunday night show three weeks ago, we did... What was my question to you? It was something like, will we have a, a power conference coaching change by February 1? I think we both said yes with no real. In- I both said yes, thinking it might be Louisville. Uh, maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll be DePaul. Um, well, I, I said yes based on like, you know, somebody's going to be in a police report. 
Like, okay. it, 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 or at least that's on the list of. I, I actually don't predict somebody's going to end up in a police report, but that's that's among the reasons that you could get an in season coaching change. I, I will say, like, listen, I, I don't think it, it seems unlikely Tony Stubblefield is going to get a year four. Seems unlikely Kenny Payne's going to get a year three at Louisville. Uh, by the way, DePaul would be a one point favorite according to Ken Palm over Louisville in that game. Um, I, let me ask you this, okay? Because I am a big, but like. I'm red. I have seen enough. I don't think Kenny Payne should continue as the coach at Louisville next season. I don't have any need to do it now or next month or in February or anytime. What, what do you actually gain by firing a coach early? Like what can you think of an example? I don't mean to catch you off guard, mm -hmm. but you, you fired your coach mid season in college basketball because obviously things were bad and then things got good. Does that ever happen? I, I know it happens in baseball sometimes and in the NFL sometimes. And does it ever happen in college basketball? I don't remember it ever happening. If anyone it doesn't mean it happened. I just yeah. can't recall. Someone in the chat wants to pick us up on this. I, the reasons that happens, you know, sometimes, not all the time, is uh, there is enough fan base revolt, like outright revolt, where it gets untenable for an AD in that environment uh, to, to do their job on a day-to-day -day basis. And then also you have very influential people at the booster level or board of uh, directors level at a given uh, university where uh, they just can't take it anymore. And they'll just say, just have someone else coach the team, um, at least give fans a tangible material reason to show that we are indeed making a change moving on. And why not just why continue to drag this out? Sometimes it could be done to spare a coach in that kind of specific instance. Oh, there. I, I could totally get why a coach might want to do it. I mean, literally at Louisville, the last time this yeah. happened with Chris Mack, which is which is crazy to think about. And believe me, we didn't have any intentions of going a little bit long on Louisville here. But remember, Mack and, and the administration came to and essentially an agreement. Now, technically, he was fired because he got more money. It's you're either resigned or you're fired or you retire. It's one of those. So technically, Mac was fired. But um, as I understand it, he was the one that really was as much of a catalyst to instigate that when it came time to really put everything down on the table. Um, Mark Turgeon at Maryland, same thing. Turgeon absolutely instigated his exit out of Maryland. And that's another recent example of when this happened. And Andy Kennedy at Ole Miss, I believe, was going to be allowed to coach out the season. And he reached a point where he said, yeah. I just don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. So there are a number of factors that for the reasons that happened. One reason that isn't a major reason as far as I'm concerned, but well, but ADs will use it as a public facing reason is it allows them to get a head, a quote unquote head start on a national search that. for a replacement. Any AD worth their salt is already doing plenty of this work behind the scenes. Uh, it, it would be derelict of uh, of the duty of, uh, of Josh Harris, the current Louisville athletic director, if he has not already um, started to make calls and, and do that diligence already. Um, oh, but every time we bring up Louisville, somebody tags him on Twitter <laughs> to our podcast or something. Where it, where it is, though. So it's to that exact point, like, you know, Kenny Payne holds a very distinct pri pri excuse me, prideful place in the history of that program. And so... Um, yeah, they're in a very, very tough spot, and understandably so. The fan base right now, and I don't want to be a broken record on this, but you did just barely beat a team that had four players left on the floor at <laughs> home. Mean, come on, man. Um, after the after the way the max stuff ended, and it's such a weird like what could have been like they were on pace to be a good seed in the tournament in 2020, then we didn't have an NCAA tournament. Like who the hell knows? Like what if they make the tournament, goes to the Sweet Sixteen, you ready, things you, are just better. Than, oh, are you ready weird. for this? If we had the tournament in 2020, this could be different. How about this? And I understood it got bad and Chris was ready to get out of there and whatever. If everybody could have just taken a breath and said, hey, take a breath. This I know. Easy, not to going say, to easy to say now, but my good, that's not where we were. No, I know. But here's my point. Okay. If they would have done it, mm -hmm. how much better off would Louisville basketball be today? It, 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 it's hard to imagine how it couldn't be, but even still better off might have been instead of four and 28 last season, maybe it's, you know, a 12 win team. That's eh, hard to see. Maybe a 15. Chris Mack, but it, Chris Mack having that is Chris. This is. There's Chris so much go, extortion. <laughs> how easily, how quickly you forget everything. that That's the whole thing about Louisville, man. I mean, go back to Patino. There's, 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 so weird, like, uh, weird juju. Chris right? Mack was one of the best coaches in America, and then he just wasn't. No, or or it just went like sometimes it just gets sideways on you, 
And if you don't have time to get it back, then you don't get it back. But I've, I, I haven't always endorsed like, hey, just relax. But I really do think sometimes if everybody could just relax, this thing will work itself out. But everybody gets so worked up and it's like, we got to make a coaching change. This is the guy was good enough to get your job. If you would have, if every, and Chris pl played a role in this as well, but I just, I, I refuse to believe that if for whatever reason, let's just say that Louisville was having financial problems and they just said, Hey, we can't afford, we can't afford to fire you right now. You got to keep coaching. They'd be better off today. Way better off. Well, we'll see where we can get moving here on Louisville, but between Louisville and DePaul, those are the two power conference jobs clearly at the most risk of opening uh, before we get out of the season. Maybe before we get out of 2023, um, don't wish it upon anyone, but uh, hey, again, factually, statistically, Louisville is at 500 for the first time. Well, congrats, in, congratulations to them. Two years. There, there we are. Uh, congratulations. Continue, 